Today, we're gonna make this part here in FreeCAD. This is not the main version of FreeCAD. This is the real Thunder version, so check the description. I'm just gonna make this all in one sketch, actually. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle. That's 150 by 150. Then I'll actually make a rectangle for these holes. That will be 100 by 100. I will make these actually three circles right here. One is 86 for the pipe, one is 70, one is 87. So I'll put those three in. And then while I'm at it, I'll put in these holes. And then I'll work on this area here for those two slots, except those are just relief slots actually but I'm not doing this in the sheet metal operator or the workbench, so I'm going to draw them in physically. And then lastly, we have this, this little sketch for this tab that will be four millimeters wide. Then after that, I'll just need to add in dimensions. I'll add in this R15 and then that should be just about everything. We can just go ahead and start extruding things. So let's go on sketch, make one on the X, Y plane. For a centered rectangle, I can go up here, create. I want this inside one to actually be a construction geometry. So we'll toggle that. I can click on these two and I want to make them equal. Same with this, make that equal. Now I can add in some dimensions. That should be 150, this should be 100. So that is constrained now. I'll go ahead and put those circles in. So one, two, three. And then actually I'm just gonna make these two and you'll see later, make those two equal. And then while I'm here, why don't I make a fillet, corner preserving fillet. Click on those lines. And you will see actually that we lost one of our constraints here. So I need to add this 150 back in there. Okay, so now let me zoom into this area and add in this. So we have a slot that is 15 to that tangent point. I don't know of a way of doing it in FreeCAD. So I know this is six millimeters wide, which is a radius of three. So I'm just gonna make this 12 right there. And then I will make them symmetric along this line and then 30 millimeters spaced apart. So let's work on that here. Type in G and then S for a slot. I'm just gonna put those in there for now. I know these are equal, so let me click on these two, the arc, make them equal. And then I will make these two vertical. So now they move together. And lastly, I can click on some points and then this axis, make those symmetric. So now, however I move them, they're moving symmetrically. I'll go ahead and add in a dimension up here between these two, it should be 30 millimeters. As we discussed before, I know they should be six millimeters wide. And finally, we know the depth should be 15 millimeters from this edge to this tangent point. And then this is three from here to here. So I'm just gonna say this right here is 12. And if I wanted to, I could type G and L to make a line. I could add a construction line in here, dimension that construction line to be 15. It gives us the same answer same result. 
So we have that there. I will type G and L again to make a line. Dimension that from that point to that point, four millimeters. This turns black because it is now constrained. Now we have some other dimensions to put in. I know these fillets are equal, so I'll add those in. These holes are equal as well. I'll click on this to constrain the arcs. The radius should be 15, and then this hole is 16. They're very similar. So now 87, 86, and 70. So now I'm fully constrained, and a couple last things. As you notice, I only did part of this because this is something that we can actually rotate around. So I'm basically going to make some lines here, and then I will take this area in and do a circular pattern. So it's all the way around. So we'll copy this basically four times. So I'll make a line from here to this endpoint over here, from this endpoint to this. Still fully constrained, so I can exit there. I want to click on this and this, pad that. We know our thickness should be four. And just for clarity, that is extruding upwards four millimeters. Now I will expand this and select on this area of the profile. We see down here that from that bottom, 20 millimeters, 21 millimeters that is, so I need to reverse that direction, type in 21. Have a couple chamfers to put on here. Those should be four right here, four by 45. 45 is the default for a chamfer, so equal distance, four millimeters, except that. I will click on this inside edge, make that four millimeter radius. Click on the outside one, it's four plus four because our thickness is four. And just to verify that, I can cut a section and see that does look like a constant thickness. So I believe we are now good to select all of these. Make sure you do make sure you don't select the sketches as well. You just want the actual features here. I want a polar pattern. And that's two. So now I'll bump that up to four. And that looks like the result we want. If you need to change the axis, you can do that. Select reference down here. I will OK that. So that's part of our model. Now I'm going to go back to this original sketch and select on these right there. And I need to extrude this up for that pipe. That should be 114 millimeters. So click on pad 114. OK. Let's look from a front view just to make sure that lines up. We can see it is starting from the bottom. That's 114 millimeters up. And something to note, this is additive. So even though it's not touching, it adds it to that same body. Just be careful with that if your mass is ever wrong. So anyways, I can open up my mass property toolbar, my macro over here. Unit should be grams, material is plain carbon steel, 
make sure to select on the body and 2274 looks like looks like my correct answer so I can go ahead and copy that paste it into my answer or type it in and that should be our final part so I hope that helped